Good morning, good morning. This is Claricia Myers coming to you live. I'm coming to you live from our kitchen this morning. I normally go outside to walk because I love the outdoors, but today the temperature is 36 degrees and it is raining. And this is flu season, so I'm gonna use my better judgment and just do my broadcast from here. So, thank you for joining me. Do me a favor, be sure to share this out because uh, I have something special for you this morning. Good morning, Yvette, I can wave to you. Thank you for joining me today. It was just saying that it's really wet outside. The temperature is 36 degrees, it's very cold. And uh, I'm gonna, like I said, use my better judgment and do my broadcast from here. All right, um, the topic that I wanted, let me just say before, welcome spiritual entrepreneurs. I'm speaking to those who are, who want more from life, who wanna be more, wanna do more, wanna contribute more. Some of you uh, spiritual entrepreneurs may not even know you are an entrepreneur. You have this seed inside of you and you just kind of like bury it and sometimes you look at it and but don't want to do anything about it. So I'm speaking to those of you who are um, a little bit timid or shy or afraid to venture out. Good morning, Rolita. Good morning to you. Good morning, Ken. Glad that you can join me also this morning. And uh, I think it's got you, Yvette, already. Good. So um, I'm going to talk a little bit about measuring great riches. Now, you say riches. You know, you ever heard that saying, never judge a book by its cover? Well, uh, some time ago, someone had given me the book, Think and Grow Rich. Now, when we moved, Roland and I moved to Richmond, a lot of our things are in storage. So I didn't have access to go and get the book because I've been reading and listening to podcasts. And so I thought, hey, I'm going to read that book, Think and Grow Rich. And I was amazingly surprised to find that there are a lot of jewels and nuggets buried between the pages of this book. So uh, the first thing is, how do you measure great riches? Most people think of the first thing is, oh, it has to be money. And, and I was uh, thinking, oh, riches, I don't want to be do you know, dealing with that. My mindset was not ready for that. It, it just wasn't. And so it kind of turned me off because I talked about riches and you know I'm a very spiritual person and you know we don't want to focus our attention on money but you know we're living in this society and you do need it to be able to function and to do some of the things that you need to do in life. Good morning Nan Nanoi. Good morning to you. Glad that you can join me this morning. So um, in reading the first part of the book they talked about measuring what um, true riches are. And the first one is building and maintaining lasting friendships. I'm sure some of you have friends that you've had from childhood. Maybe you have met friends in, in college along the way, high school, and it doesn't matter how much time or space comes between you. When you do team up, it's, it's as if it was yesterday. Nothing, has, nothing is missing from your relationship. Those are relationships to maintain. And um, the second one, he says, harmonious family relationships. That's another measure of, of riches, harmonious family relationships. There are some people, their families, they've been separated for, for months or years, even generations. I, I remember as a child growing up, there was some kind of feud, you know, like, oh, no, we don't talk to so-and-so, that we don't get along. And so... You know, you, this a separation. That's that's foolish. We should mature beyond that foolishness. Um, third, number th three and number four, and I'm going to come back to that in a minute. Sympathy and understanding between business associates. That's so important. Sympathy and understanding, and even empathy. Um, good morning, Albert. Glad that you can join me. That's my cousin right there. Yes. Um, Sympathy and understanding between business associates. You know, I feel that a lot of times experiences that we have allow us to be able to empathize with others or sympathize with them because it, it, it's what makes us human. And we cannot be indifferent to what other people are going through. Number four, inner harmony within yourself. 
that brings peace of mind and spiritual values. Now I'm going to come back to three and four because this is part of my story of what, um, what motivated me to start my journey towards entrepreneurship. Now I, I taught for 35 years in the classroom and I loved it. Loved my students and have relationships with many of them still today. But um, and like I mentioned before, some of you may have seen that broadcast. In 2016, uh, my husband Roland, he's not with me this morning, but uh, he suffered two strokes. Uh, the first one, you know, it did do some damage, but I was thankful it wasn't that much. That was in June. But then in November, he suffered a second um, stroke, which, you know, caused some cognitive damage. When he didn't recognize me, when he didn't know where he was. He was in the hospital, but he didn't know where he was. He did not recognize me. You know, that gave me trepidation that, you know, you know, did he lose everything? And so I, you know, trying to be supportive to him, I was out on family medical leave, you know, the 12 weeks to try to support him in his recovery. And uh, even though I had gone back to work after 12 weeks, you know, I was still on partial medical leave because I needed to take him to doctor's appointments and needed to take him to um, take testing and, and things like that. And so it caused me to have to still take time off from work to get some, someone to cover my classroom, had to do lesson plans and all that stuff to be out of the room, you know, to be able to support my husband. But the first day that I returned from family medical leave, I've, I've been gone for 12 weeks. And then my administrator, she said to me, she said, um, you know, when you're here, I need you here. You know, it was almost like sh there was no greeting, number one, no greeting. Hello, you know, welcome back. You know, uh, you know, we missed you. How was your husband? Uh, and during the time that my husband uh, was uh, recovering from the stroke, this was in November, December, I lost my mom. My mom passed away. So, um, Coming back to work after being out from 12 weeks, uh, my, my husband in, in I, I considered, you know, critical kid, critical conditions simply because he medications and stuff, and he couldn't remember to take them on time, those kinds of things. And so when I was posed with uh, Ms. Myers, I need to come into your, I need you to give me two dates. I need you to, um, I need to come and do an observation. You know where we talk about uh, sympathy and understanding. You know, I felt something was seriously lacking. Here, here I was. I had, you know, contributed most of my life doing what I was passionate about. I love working with the kids. But, you know, I felt something was desperately missing. For the first words, not even a greeting, to be, hello, how are you? You know, sorry that we heard you lost your mom. You know, there was a lot of things going on in my life at that time. And uh, to be posed with, okay, uh, what are your remediation strategies to uh, help students who are struggling? I was just trying to get my mind together so I can still be able to help my husband, you know, because he is my why. He is my why. And um, I was not about to, see, that goes to number four, you know, inner harmony that brings peace of mind. I, did, I could not have peace of mind in myself leaving him knowing that he needed me and just going to to work and focusing all my energies on my students uh, i'm not saying i didn't love my students but my husband needed me more and so th at that point it made me realize well what is important what is what is your purpose here and so that is when i decided you know what you know the things that i have are unrealized dreams i can work from the from the comfort of my home and do some of the things that I've been passionate about. I love writing. I love writing stories. And I have written uh, one book. It's, um, it's called Ian and Igor, Inquisitive Island Iguanas, based on St. Thomas, where I'm from. So in reading this, uh, this is just the first part of the book, and reading what greatness is, what's true riches, you know, what we need to value, um, lasting relationships that you have with others, you know, harmonious family relationships, having sympathy and understanding between uh, business associates. And that, that, for me, that was huge. That, that helped me to make the decision as to what is important to me. 
uh, and then again having that inner harmony that peace of mind within yourself um, you know in terms of your spiritual values oh I'm sorry good morning to some others who have come on here good morning Coven and Nina good morning to you I'm glad that you can join me this morning um, so in, in reading that, I also read on where Napoleon Hill, he is the author of Think and Grow Rich. That's the book that I'm, I'm reading now. I'm kind of listening to the pod because my book, my book is stored away in, um, in storage. So he listed some other measures of true um, wealth or true wealth to consider. And you know, on the list, the last, well, I'm gonna come to that in a minute. So the first thing, having a positive mental attitude. That's critical. You can't go anywhere, hardly do much, if you don't have that critical, that positive mental attitude. Second, sound physical health. You know, if your body is falling apart, to be able to do some of the things that you want to do in life, it, it makes it more challenging. I'm not saying it's impossible, but you have an uphill struggle. And so our health is wealth. We have to take care of it so it can take care of us in the later life. Good morning, Adriel. Good morning, glad that you can join me this morning. Um, third, he says, harmony in human relationships. Some people feel that to, to, to be an effective leader, they have to rule with the iron fist. You know, you gotta do this, you know, and they're not willing to listen to someone else's, um, their ideas. You know, they, have, they come across really strong. You know, so harmony in human relationships. There's a way to speak to people. You know, there is a way, and and, and it's an art. Uh, four, freedom from fear. That's another measure of wealth. Being able to follow your dreams and not be let fear hinder or sh hinder you or stop you. Um, hope for the future. Hope for your future achievement. Now, that was huge for me. Um, I'm so excited about my book that is going to uh, be, I don't know the release date yet, but I do, I will be keeping you uh, posted and updated. It's a children's book. It's one of a series of four, and this is just the first. Um, uh, like I said, capacity for applied things. Uh, another one, willingness to share one's blessings with others. And there again, we are not given blessing, blessings or gifts and talents to just hoard them to ourselves. We are to use those gifts, those talents, those blessings to share with others. Um, another, to be engaged in a labor of love. Now, you know, an example of that. My sister, my older sister, uh, she has been working for the last, I guess, four or five years on a family tree. Uh, she's doing it through ancestry. Uh, you know, for years we've been saying, oh, we need to do a family tree. We need to do a family tree. Family members would say that because our family is so huge. And so on the family tree, she has over 11,000 family members on it. And so I really, that that has to be a labor of love. I mean, because as we, we move on, as we get older, we age, we lose our loved ones. And then we don't know, our, it's something good to have. So she she's doing a labor of love. Um, to be open-minded to all subjects, uh, towards all people. Some people have prejudices, and, and that can hinder them from achieving their fullest potential. Uh, next, complete self-discipline. You know, that's something that we all are working on. We work on improving ourselves, because we can't do it for anyone else. Improving ourselves brings more value to us. Uh, this um, wisdom um, with which to understand people. That's a gift, wisdom. Wisdom <laughs> to understand people, to be able to read emotions. Of course, we're not mind readers, but based on our experiences and what others have been through, we can learn how to uh, read other people without necessarily using words. It's a gift. And of course, the last thing on the list, financial security. All of these things are, are ways to measure riches or wealth. And so it's not just one thing. All of these go back to a mindset. We have to get our minds in, in that zone so that we can move forward gradually towards our greatness. 
All right. So, oh, I'm sorry. I'm oh glad, Orlean. Thank you. You you've got a whole lot of them there. Thank you. I'm glad uh, you have written them down. Oh, there are quite a few. Um, so this is what I want to do today. I want you to. I'm going to give two offers. The first offer is one. If you would like me to just take a look at your your business page or your profile page and you know for me to give you some pointers on how you can get more people to be attracted to your page and get more engagement or more leads if you're an entrepreneur put a one in the comments below if you would also like to be a part of my Facebook live challenge it won't be next week my plan was to do it next week, but it's Thanksgiving next week. And uh, we have three, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday. Of course, Thursday and Friday will be like a break time. I didn't want to do the Facebook challenge where we had an interruption in the week. So if you would like to be a part of my Facebook uh, live challenge, not this week, but the week after Thanksgiving, drop a two in the comments below. And also, while I'm talking about uh, what I need you to do, if you've gained any value of anything that I've said today, share this out because, you know, there's someone out there who's looking for, looking for ways that they can improve themselves. What can they do to, to, to fine tune their business? What can they do to become better, to be more successful? They want more out of life. They want to do more, be more, contribute more. And so these are just some of the things that have been going through my mind and I would like to share with you. Um, I've list, uh, listed in the description a link to a free uh, training on telling your story, telling storytelling. And um, I shared a little story with about my journey towards entrepreneurship. You know, something, you know, sometimes it gets a little bit emotional because I lived through it and it wasn't that long ago, but you know, we all have greatness within us and it's up to us to bring it out. And so part of doing that is to be able to tell your story. And so um, that's what I'm doing. So I thank you for joining me this morning. If you would like to uh, me to take a look at your, your profile page, your business page, uh, to offer some pointers, this is free. Drop a one in the comments. And if you would like to be a part of the Facebook challenge facebook live challenge is a five-day challenge not for next week but the week after thanksgiving drop a two in the comments below i thank you for joining me uh, make sure today is a powerful uh, on purpose and um, awesome day and again i come to you every morning monday through friday at 8 a.m Thank you for the love. Thank you for the hearts. And do me a favor. If you're catching the replay, write hashtag replay. That way I can, um, that, that way I know I can still reach out to you. And uh, I thank you again for joining me today. Have a great day. See you tomorrow. Bye now.